Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's session looking at the Regional Skills Assessment for the Ayrshire region. Before I hand over to our speakers for today, let me introduce them. This session is delivered by the Regional Skills Planning and Sector Development Directorate, which plays a vital role in delivering essential resources to inform skills planning and investment across Scotland. First up, we have the Evidence and Impact Team. Kerry Wilkie is an expert in national economic and labour market information and is excited to talk about the work of the team today with you. Alongside her, um, she is joined by Monica Friariti, who has expertise in regional and skills, in regional and sectoral skills assessments and led the delivery of the regional skills assessments this year. They are also joined by Karen Bayless, who is an experienced labour market researcher. We're also joined by the region's regional skills planning lead, Paul Zeely, today. And I'm sure many of you know Paul through his extensive work across the region uh, to, to inform skills delivery and skills development. So over to Kerry. Thank you, Katie, and hello, everyone. So we're, as Katie mentioned, we're all really pleased to be here today to talk to you about the dedicated work of the team throughout the past year or so. Um, we have quite a full agenda for you over the next 40 minutes, so we're going to start off by exploring the impressive suite of evidence and impact resources that are available to you all. And then I'll go over a little bit on the key drivers of Scotland's labour market, providing valuable insight into the broader landscape. And following that, we'll delve into the specifics of the Ayrshire Regional Skills Assessment, focusing on what the evidence tells us about the region alongside the future outlook. And as Katie mentioned, we're also going to hear from Paul Zeely, who's our regional skills planning lead on the opportunities and developments currently happening within Ayrshire. And then we'll, we'll have a little the summary of the session before moving on to questions and answers. So please do, as Katie mentioned, pop your questions into us via the Q&A feature and we'll answer as many as possible at the end. But let's get started. So I'd just like to highlight our resources first, all available online. We have our national products at the top here, which firstly, we have our economy, people and skills monthly report. And this is the main product in our national level resources that is published on a monthly basis. But it provides current evidence on Scotland's economy, businesses and people. And then additionally, at that national level, we have really detailed outputs related to things like green jobs in Scotland, which aim to enhance the evidence base for green skills. And we also have the education and skills impact framework, which focuses on labour market outcomes and returns on investment. Then at the level underneath these national products, you'll find our more detailed offerings like our regional skills assessments and our sectoral skills assessments. And we'll focus on regional skills assessments today. And then our most detailed resource is our data matrix, which is our self-service tool offering local level labour market data, which is regularly updated. So that covers the products that we have, again, all available online, but it's also worth covering a little bit about how we do this. Now, all of the outputs that I've talked about are underpinned by engagement with our partners, stakeholders and colleagues in SDS as well. We take a mixed methods approach to skills assessment that's consistent with OECD best practice. And this really allows us to create a comprehensive evidence base that's consistent across the levels of detail that I've talked about. And we draw on quite a diverse range of data sources to produce these outputs, including things like published research, statistics, real time data and qualitative insights as well. Now, before we get into the, the data on Scotland overall and then looking at Ayrshire, just wanted to cover a little bit about what regional skills assessments actually are. Now, we call regional skills assessments are known as RSAs um, and they provide a consistent evidence base to inform investment and in skills across Scotland. They form the foundation of our offer for comprehensive understanding of regional labour markets and they were first introduced around 2014. And really the main purpose when they were first introduced was to support skills planning and investment for regional outcome agreement areas. But since then they've evolved over time and are applicable to other partners and stakeholders while still being central to their original purpose. Now on an annual basis we produce 23 reports in total covering regional outcome agreement areas, city deals, growth deals and rural Scotland. 
And we also produced some of the infographics for each of Scotland's 32 local authorities containing headline in indicators for each area in Scotland, and these are available through our data matrix. We work closely with key partners and stakeholders so that we can ensure an inclusive approach to RSA development, dissemination and utilisation. And one of the main data sources that we have in the regional skills assessments is our Oxford Economics forecasts, and we'll talk a lot about these today. And we use these forecasts to inform both the regional skills assessments and the sectoral skills assessments. Now, working with Oxford Economics, we, the, their forecast model really takes account of international, national and regional outlooks, but also looks at historical trends and external economic conditions as well. And the forecast suite really provides a baseline, uh, which could change as the forecasts are policy neutral, so they don't reflect policy that is at planning stage or it's unconfirmed or an investment that is at the planning stages as well. But for this year's RSAs, the forecasts cover the 10 year period up to 2033. And this is split into midterm and long term forecasts. So you'll, you'll hear my colleagues speak about this a bit more later on today. So the midterm covers the period 2023 up to 2026. And when we talk about long term, we're talking about the period from 2026 up to 2033. So now that I've set the scene on all of the resources that are available, I'll, like I said, I'll shortly hand over to my colleagues. In this case, it'll be Monica to talk about what the evidence tells us about the Ayrshire region. But first, I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of the drivers of Scotland's labour market. And the first I wanted to talk about was Scotland's economy. So Scotland and the UK have faced quite significant challenges over the past few years, including things like rising inflation, tight monetary policy and weak economic growth. Now, we know inflation has reached a 40 year high in 2022, really driven by multiple factors, things like escalating energy costs, challenges around labour supply and demand, which is known as a tight labour market, has impacted inflation too. And we have started to see inflation come down, which is really good news. Um, but we do know that higher interest rates are expected to persist for some time. And equally, forecasts do project the subdued economic growth for Scotland and the UK up until around 2026. And alongside this, we have climate change as another driver of the labour market. So the climate emergency has been recognised by governments across the world and the drive for a net zero carbon economy in Scotland by 2045 will alter labour market dynamics, creating demand for green jobs and green skills. The Climate Emergency Skills Action Plan really sets out how the Scottish Government will ensure the workforce has the skills needed for this transition to net zero. And a new suite of reports to enhance the evidence base for green skills is now available on the SAS website. So I'd encourage you to have a look at those reports if you're interested in, in finding out a bit more about the Climate Emergency Skills Action Plan and, and green jobs in general. Now, demographic change uh, encompasses a, a lot of things. We're talking about the population here, but really about how Scotland's population is ageing. And according to the latest census data that we have available, there are now more older people in Scotland than ever before. And this trend is projected to continue. So migration is expected to be one of the only source of population gain in Scotland in the future. And this is really likely to put pressure, extra pressure on things like public services. But not only that, with populations ageing, the global economy is likely to see more people working for longer due to increases in things like state pension ages and, and also increases in health and the length of time that people can actually work in a healthy way. But this will in turn change things like working habits and working preferences. And we do know that as a result of all of this, upskilling and reskilling will be needed to enhance workers' experiences and knowledge as well. But we know demographic change isn't the only driver for the need for upskilling and reskilling. So there's also a need for digital skills across all sectors of Scotland's economy. Now, technology and automation has really taken the forefront of um, narrative over the past year. So ongoing technological advances and things like artificial intelligence have, are starting to impact consumer behaviour and work dynamics. And these advancements have the potential to reshape the economy and the labour market in the future. 
Now, research shows that automation could change the nature of many jobs. It's estimated that globally around a third of jobs could see a large share of their tasks either being automated or changed in some way. But this really emphasises the value of uniquely human meta skills, so things like self-management, innovation and social intelligence, for example. The Digital Economy Skills Action Plan is a call to action shaped by industry partners, which really helps shape, it helps to realise the potential of Scotland's digital economy through a series of priority skills actions. So again, similar to the Climate Emergency Skills Action Plan, I'd encourage you to have a look at that if you're interested in finding out a bit more. And finally, before I hand over to Monica, we, um, it's important to note economic, economic disparities still persist in Scotland. So this has been impacted or exacerbated, I should say, by the cost of living crisis and is really impacting disadvantaged groups. I guess one example that I could provide of uh, the disparities that Scotland faces is that more women than men earned less than the real living wage in Scotland in 2022. Now, the Scottish Government's commitment to fairness and greater equality is reiterated in the National Strategy for Economic Transformation, known as NSET. But really, if I was to sum this up for you in one takeaway point, it, it really is that Scotland's labour market faces quite a complex outlook of these interlinking factors that I've talked about. And they not only present challenges for, for now and for the future, but also opportunities that we'll talk a, a bit more about as we go through this webinar. Now I'm going to hand over to Monica, who will explore what the evidence tells us about the Ayrshire region. Thank you, Gary, and hi, everyone. So now we're going to look at some of the evidence found in the RSA report and what does that tell us specifically about the Ayrshire region. And just for clarification, the local authorities that make up the Ayrshire region is East, East Ayrshire, North Ayrshire and South Ayrshire. So let's have a look at economic performance of the region. So here we use the growth value, gross value added or GVA to estimate the economic output of the region. So GVA measures the value of goods and services produced within the economy and is used as an indicator of the region's health. In 2023, the GVA for Ayrshire region is estimated to be 6.6 .6 billion pounds and this accounted for 4.5 percent of Scotland's total economic output for that period. And industries in the Ayrshire region with the highest value of economic output in 2023 were forecast to be manufacturing, human health and social work activities, real estate activities and wholesale and retail trade. Over the past decade, the region experienced a lower rate of economic growth compared to the Scottish average, so growing by 0.7% per year compared to 1% growth per year for Scotland. So we can see that in the blue bar and the green bar on the chart. And we can also see that there are significant variations in GVA growth rates amongst the individual local authorities within the area. So that is shown on the purple bars on the graph. So over the past decade, East and North Ayrshire experienced annual growth rates slightly above the Scottish average, while the growth in South Ayrshire was minimal. And looking at the future, the economic growth in the Ayrshire region is expected to be slightly below the Scottish average over the next decade. So over the midterm, the GVA in the region is forecast to grow by around 1.5% per year compared to annual growth of 1.7 across Scotland. And over the long term, Ayrshire GVA is expected to grow annually by 0.9% per year compared to 1.1 growth across the Scotland per year. Another measure of how region is performing is productivity. So what do we mean by productivity? So in summary, it is the efficiency of the production of goods and services and is a crucial factor in performance of firms and nations. And here we use the GVA per job measure. So productivity in Asia was forecast to be 45,800 pounds per job in 2023. And this was a lower rate of productivity than the Scottish average of 52,600 pounds per job. And looking at the future, the forecast productivity rates for Ayrshire region are expected to increase. So productivity in the region is expected to increase to £47,100 by 2026 and to £50,800 by 2033. Despite the growth in the product productivity rates in, the, in Ayrshire, we still expect that Ayrshire's productivity to continue to be below the average for Scotland as a whole. 
And we know that some of the regions have a higher rate of productivity or GVA per jobs, and this is usually due to the industry mix of the region. So it might, it might have a higher higher rate of technology industries, which tend to have a higher productivity rates. So the factors that might contribute towards a lower productivity in the Asia region could include a higher regional share in employment in lower productivity sectors, such as wholesale and retail and human health and social work. I guess it's worth pointing out that there are different ways of calculating productivity and pandemic actually created a new challenge is how it's estimated accurately. So caution is needed be when interpreting the productivity figures. They do provide an estimate, but it's important to consider them alongside other data or your own regional insight. So now we know that Ayrshire is important to the Scotland's economy, but how does that translate into employment? So let's have a look at how many people are employed in the region. In 2023, there were forecast to be more than 140,000 people in employment in the Ayrshire region. And this accounts for over 5% of total employment in Scotland. As we can see, over as we can see over the graph, over the past decade, the employment in the region grew by more than 3% compared to employment growth of 4% in Scotland. And two local authorities within the region also experienced a growth in the workforce over the past decade, while the South Ayrshire experienced a decline. And looking at the future, we can see from the graph that over the midterm, the workforce in the region is expected to grow by around 2%, which is just slightly below the growth forecast across, across the Scotland, which is 2.2%. And all the local authorities within the region are also expected to experience growth over the midterm as well. And over the long term, the workforce growth is not forecast to continue and is forecast to contract by around 2% in Ayrshire region. In comparison, Scotland's workforce is expected to grow around by 1% over the same period. And all local authorities within the region are expected also to see a contraction in the workforce. So in, 2020, in 2033, the employment levels in Ayrshire are expected to remain broadly the same as in 2023. So let's now take a look at which industries these people are employed in the region. So in 2023, the largest employing industries in terms of number of people employed include human health and social work activities, with workforce of 28,000 people. The next largest is the wholesale and retail trade, with more than 20,000 people employed. And the third largest was manufacturing, with 14,000 people employed. Obviously, largest industries are important source of jobs. However, regions also have a sectoral strengths that make them unique. So this means that sm small industries can be more important than their size suggests because they are more concentrated in the region compared to the national average. And that reveals the relative level of industrial specialism within the region. So in Ayrshire, mining, of coal and lignite was the one of the specials which percentage of employment in the sector was seven times greater than the Scottish average in 2023. The next largest special in the region was manufacture of basic pharmaceutical products and pharmaceutical preparations, which was almost uh, four times greater than the Scottish average in 2023. And looking at the future, over the next decade, the human health and social work is expected to have the largest absolute growth in employment with expected more than 1,000 additional workers. And employment gains are also forecasted in administrative and support services and arts and entertainment and, and recreation. However, these gains will be partially offset by losses in manufacturing, which is forecast to contract by around 2,500 workers. Even though the number of people employed in manufacturing industry is forecast to, to decline, the GDA in the industry is expected to increase by around 1% on average per year between 2023 and 2033. So as increased automation of process and tasks in production is resulting in a fall in labor demand. The public administration and defense industry is also forecast to, to decline by around 1,000 workers by 2033. As well as the industries, it's also interesting to understand what occupations people are working within the region. So the largest employing occupation groups in Ayrshire in 2023 included caring, personal service occupations with more than 13,000 people employed, administrative occupations with more than 13,000 people employed, and elementary occupations, clerical and service with 12,400 people employed. 
In 2023, there were more people in Ayrshire employed in mid-level and lower-level occupations compared to the Scottish average, so that would be occupations such as sales and customers, process plan and machine operators, skilled trade, caring and leisure occupation. So around 33% of Ayrshire workforce were employed in mid-level occupations compared to 29% across Scotland, and around 27% of Ayrshire's workforce were employed in lower-level occupations compared to 23% across Across Scotland and only around 41% of workforce were employed in higher level occupations compared to 48% across Scotland so that would be occupations such as corporate managers and looking at the future the changing industrial mix that I just covered in the previous slide is expected to impact the occupational profile across the region and will affect the occupations and skills requi required across the region's workforce. So between 2023 and 2033, the caring personal service occupations are forecast to experience the largest employment growth in Ayrshire with additionally 800 workers. And these occupations are linked to employment growth in human health and social work sector. The corporate managers, business and public service professionals and business and public service associate professionals will attribute further 1,400 workers combined. And at the other end, we expect to see around 1,600 fewer workers in sales occupations, elementary, clerical and service occupations and administrative occupations reflecting the, ploy, the falling employment in public and defence sector in the decade to 2033 and also the increased automation will lead to contraction in roles linked to manufacturing such as process plan and machine operatives. The receipts also contain information on real-time recruitment activity within the region. So the data on job postings comes from online job adverts and our provider is at Lightcast and can be a very good measure of real-time recruitment activity. However, it's important to highlight that it doesn't capture the whole recruitment activity, only the jobs that are posted online. So we can see from the graph there has been a steady increase in job postings since COVID-19 pandemic and the job postings actually reach a recent high in 2022 at 22,500 job postings in Ayrshire. In the, in, in, in the first six months of 2023, there has been a sustained demand for workers in the region with around 12,000 12, job postings. And this accounted for over 3% of job postings in Scotland between January and June this year. So what are those job postings? So let's have a closer look at the recruitment within the Ayrshire in the first six months of this year. So locations with the most jobs advertised within the first six months of this year included Ayr with 3,200 job postings, Kilmarnock with 2,500 job postings, and Irvine with 1,800 job postings. So those three locations account for more than 60% of job postings advertised in the region. And among the 12,000 job postings advertised in Ayrshire, the most commonly requested skills and knowledge by employers were communications, customer service, management, and teaching. And the top job postings in terms of occupation included care workers and home carers, nurses, kitchen and catering assistant, and administrative occupations. So we talked about the current demand in the Irish in terms of employment and job postings. And now we're going to move on to talk about the labor market participation, which helps to paint the picture of a supply of the people. So for this, we use the annual participation, annual population survey data produced by Office for National Statistics, and it is released quarterly. So the information you're seeing here is based on the data collected for the period between July 2022 and June 2023. So the employment rate, which is the share of 16, 64 year olds in employment was 67.9% in 2023 in Ayrshire region. And this was lower than the Scottish average of 74.8%. And the employment rate in Ayrshire was higher amongst males compared to the females, which is similar to the Scottish trend as well. And of the local authorities in the Ayrshire region, we can see the employment rate range ranged from 60.4% in South Ayrshire to 72.1% in, in North Ayrshire. The Ayrshire region had a same unemployment rate as the Scotland overall, so 3.2% of economically active population aged 16 and over in Ayrshire were classified as unemployed, and this was, as I mentioned, the same 
as this for Scotland overall. And almost 30% of people aged 16, 64 were economically inactive in the Ayrshire region, which was higher than the Scottish average of 22.6%. And the main reasons for economically inact economic inactivity in Ayrshire included lo being long-term sick and retired. Almost 42% of economically inactive uh, people gave the reason of long of being gave the reason as being long term sick, which was much higher than the Scottish average of almost 32%. So I know I covered a lot of information in quite short time. So if I had to just leave you with a key takeaway of all those ind indicators, we could say that Ayrshire faced some challenges over the past 10 years, such as decline in the workforce and lower than average productivity. However, it has unique strengths and opportunities such as workforce growth in the midterm and sectoral specialism that could shape the labour market in the future. So now I'm going to hand you over to Karen, who will talk more about the future labour demand in the region. Thank you, Monica. Good afternoon, everybody. So. Um, we're going to move on now to talk about the future labour demand and opportunities within the Ayrshire region. But before we look at the forecast numbers, um, it's actually important to understand how to interpret the forecast figures. So when we talk about future demand for workers, we use three main indicators. So we use total requirement, replacement demand and expansion demand. So total requirement is the number of the total number of people that are required overall, um, and we get that figure from replacement demand and expansion demand. So the replacement demand happens when there comes a need to replace people leaving the workforce, and that can happen due to a variety of reasons. So it could be retirement, it could be caring duties, moving away, career changes, um, but basically they leave a job vacant that needs to be filled. And expansion demand comes from the number of new workers required as a result of economic growth. So if the region is expanding, that will create a demand for additional workers. However, if the labour market is contracting, then, then fewer people could also be required. So replacement demand most of the time is larger than expansion demand. And that explains why even without growth in overall employment, there is still demand for new workers. Just a gentle reminder again that the forecasts used are policy and investment neutral. So we do advise that they're used in conjunction with other sources. OK, so how many people are forecast to be required in the region over the mid term? So we can see here that over the medium term, there is a requirement for around 16 and a half thousand people in Ayrshire. And that's made up of replacement demand of around 13,600 people who are required to replace those leaving the labour market and around 2,800 people required as a result of economic growth. So we can see that most of the demand for workers in the region is going to come from replacing those who are leaving the labour market. And that's around eight in 10 opportunities in Ayrshire will be due to that replacement demand in the mid term. And we can see here we've got the Scotland figures up here as well, and we can see that that's a very similar picture for Scotland overall, where there's significant demand for workers to replace those leaving um, the labour markets. And that's also around eight and ten opportunities that are there due to that replacement demand. In terms of the total requirement by qualifications of the workforce, the greatest requirement will be for those qualified to SEQF level seven to ten in the midterm. Um, and now we're going to have a look at the long term figures so we can move on here and we can see that over the long term there is a requirement for around 31,000 people in Ayrshire. And that's made up of replacement demand of around 33,400 people. Um, and as Monica covered earlier, employment is forecast to contract in the region. So expansion demand is forecast to result in 2,400 fewer workers between 2026 and 2033. So by 2033, all of the demand for workers in the Ayrshire region will come from replacement demand. And we expect that over the long term period, um, just for context sake, that around nine and ten opportunities across Scotland will, will be due to replacement demand as well. In terms of the total requirement by qualifications of the workforce, um, similar to the midterm, we expect around 48 percent of the total requirement will be for those workers qualified. Um, to SEQF level 7 to 10, um, and that's followed by around 25% um, of those educated to SEQF level 5. Um, 
But of course, that doesn't necessarily mean there won't be demand for other qualifications as well, that there will be a demand for, for a variety of qualification levels. But when we look at future labour uh, demand forecasts by industry, we can really see that significant role that replacement demand has to play um, in the total requirement for future workers in the labour market. And uh, so on the charts here, we've got uh, replacement demand is shown in green on the graph. And you can see that it's larger than the expansion demand, which is in blue uh, for the majority of industries. So, for example, if you want to take a, a slightly closer look, if you look at the total requirement in Ayrshire for wholesale and retail trade, for example, between 2023 and 2026, we have um, expansion demand of 800 people, but the replacement demand is almost four times greater than that at 3000 workers. And even in the long term, where we expect to see contraction in wholesale, wholesale and retail trade employment, it still comes out as requiring the most people due to that large replacement demand. And we can also see here that the top three industries requiring the most people in the mid and the long term are forecast to remain the same over that period. So we've got wholesale and retail trades, we've got human health and social work, and we've also got accommodation and food service activities there. And we can also see that replacement demand is larger for the majority of occupations as well. So again, replacement demand is in the green, while expansion demand is in the blue on these charts. Um, and you can see that over the mid and the long term by occupation, the, the greatest number of people are forecast to be required in elementary occupations, clerical and services, sales occupations, um, and there's also further demand in science and technology, associate professionals and teaching and research professionals. So I guess the key messages around future demand in this sector, the forecasts do show a sustained demand for workers in Ayrshire over both the mid and the long term. Um, and that total requirement is, is mostly driven by replacement demand. But we know that there are ongoing developments within the region that won't necessarily be reflected here and, and these might influence that future demand for labour. So again, it is important to use the data provided in conjunction with other sources and your own local knowledge as well. And on that note of local knowledge, I'm going to hand over now to Paul, who is our SDS Regional Skills Planning Lead, and he is going to talk us through some of the opportunities that are currently happening within the Ayrshire region. Over to you, Paul. Thanks very much, Karen, and uh, uh, hello, everyone. J just to stress again, the point that's been made about the projections being policy and investment neutral. It's really a sort of forecast about what would happen in terms of job opportunities if nobody did anything different. What's, if you like, the natural trends of the historical job opportunities that the regions had. And obviously, partners work collaboratively together to challenge that and try and win new investment into the into the region and to highlight new areas for development and, and, and for growth. Uh, and I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about that. I think the last couple of years have shown real uh, strengths about partners working collaboratively together, working with industry and really laying out their cards in terms of where they see the future of Ayrshire lying. Um, last year, we saw the publication of Ayrshire's first regional skills investment plan which draws out the particular skills challenges that we think the region faces. This summer has seen the publication of a new uh, regional economic strategy, uh, and we begin to see some real traction around the growth deal uh, and the sectoral opportunities that that, uh, that envisages coming through for the for the region. A couple of things to, to pick up on, which I think are worth, are worth stressing. Um, you saw it there in terms of numbers. Um, Ayrshire has a really strong foundation economy, uh, a very large employer, base in, uh, for example, particularly health and social care with uh, NHS Ayrshire and Aaron being the biggest singular employer in, in, in the region. And the health board and the public sector partners more broadly are firmly committed to community wealth building, uh, Ayrshire being the, the priority region in Scotland, North Ayrshire being the priority local authority, which has pushed ahead on this inclusive economic development approach, which is now recognised across all of, all of Scotland. Um, the growth deal we mentioned that targets 7,000 new jobs and bear that number in mind when you think about the forecasts that uh, previously been shared about a likely contraction in, in, in opportunities. Uh, and that's a big focus around space and aerospace, around clean growth, around food and drink, around the visitor economy and around digital uh, technologies more broadly. Uh, 
Uh, it's worth thinking about aerospace, particularly uh, Ayrshire and particularly Presswick uh, is a concentration of 40% of all aerospace jobs in Scotland. So real strength, a real asset in that regard. And that's been reflected in the inward investments that have been crystallised in the last 12 months or so. Uh, where we're seeing new inward investors coming in uh, and existing employers looking to expand with a particular de demand for uh, good jobs in engineering uh, but with a particular focus around aerospace, but not exclusively. And that pipeline of demand around engineering is something that, that we think looks, looks set to continue. Um, I just want to conclude just by reminding people about the, the, the sort of pillars of the regional skills plan, which, if you like, is uh, something that all partners are committed to in, in trying to deal with the, the challenges that are, that are underway and has been augmented by the uh, launch of the Ayrshire Skills Investment Fund this year, too. Um, it wants to see uh, an investment in growing talent. Um, it wants to make sure that there are clear pathways between school and positive destinations. And there's been really good work with all three education departments, uh, the local college, university and ourselves uh, in, in, in mapping that out. We think there's a better understanding um, from the school and college uh, transition level around the opportunities that the, the, the growth deal might um, offer, and particularly around those new areas uh, that are forecast for, 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 for growth. Uh, we want to see a bigger focus around upskilling and reskilling, recognising um, has been demonstrated that there will be industries which have got a, a contraction uh, in the total number of jobs that are available, but really trying to uh, encourage people to look at where, where those new job growth potential uh, is best. Uh, and finally, to, to ensure that we work together to improve employability outcomes overall and to try and uh, tackle that challenge around economic inactivity and unemployment that was mentioned in the previous slides. Thanks very much. I'll just hand back. Thanks for that, Paul. That's all really interesting stuff. Um, so as we um, bring the presentation section of the webinar to a close, I would like to provide you now with some key takeaway points. So to summarise what we've discussed today, Scotland's labour market faces a complex outlook and, and the factors contributing to this are all interlinked. So we've heard about the economic challenges, climate change, demographic change, automation and also inclusive growth. And these all present both challenges, but also opportunities now and going into the future. Ayrshire has faced some challenges over the past 10 years. Um, so we've had the effects of the pandemic and we've seen lower than average productivity. However, it also has unique strengths and opportunities such as that forecast workforce growth in the midterm and, and the specialism in um, manufacture of pharmaceutical products and, and pharmaceutical preparations, operations rather, that should shape the labour market of the future. Forecasts show a high demand for workers in the region in the mid and the long term, and this is primarily driven by replacement demand. And we've also shown that there are investments and developments happening in the region, such as the opportunities in engineering, for example, and, and the project related to the Ayrshire Growth Deal investment that, that Paul has just highlighted for us there. And all of these investments and opportunities uh, will likely shape the labour market of the future. So that concludes the presentation section of the webinar today. So please do get in touch with us if you have any questions at all, any questions, comments or queries. I've put our email address up on the screen there. Um, it is rsa at sds.co.uk. So please do get in touch.